Diagnosing network problems helps to determine the severity of the problem and ensures that the correct steps are taken to fix it. In this video, I'll explain how to troubleshoot some common network problems. Turning now to some of the common network problems that you are likely to encounter at one point or another. Internet connectivity failures. Uh, obviously, we all need and rely on the internet very heavily these days. So uh, if and or when it goes down, uh, it's usually something that needs to be addressed quite quickly. Now, where the problem resides uh, can be a bit of a challenge to run down uh, as it might be internal or external to your network. So if it's the ISP, then you, you certainly need to verify with them uh, and escalate appropriately. But if it is with the ISP, there's very little that you can do on your end. Uh, so obviously, again, it's really what side of your router uh, is the problem. Now, if it is internal, then obviously we can try to run these things down, but there's a number of components, of course, involved, and it can take a bit of time, but you just need to make sure that everything that is supposed to be in place is in place and that the configuration is correct. Uh, internet failure is definitely one of the things that your users will inform you about very quickly, so uh, they will want it back as quickly as possible as well. Uh, same thing goes really for email. The inability to send or receive email uh, is one of the most important factors of business these days. Uh, so it certainly could be a, a number of causes, but incorrect email addresses, spam filters, mailbox quotas, or name resolution issues. Any or all of those can, of course, result in email failures. Now, with respect to incorrect addresses, obviously, if I'm trying to send a message to someone and I have the wrong address, uh, that's not a problem with the system. I need to make sure I get the correct address. But spam filters certainly can cause issues because sometimes they do catch legitimate email as spam. So whoever manages that needs to be on top of it because uh, obviously these legitimate messages need to be released from the quarantine. Uh, and as far as quotas go, that's uh, definitely something that users themselves need to manage to a certain degree. Uh, if your mailbox fills up, you simply have to either delete or clear some of your mail out of the mailbox before you can continue. Name resolution issues, uh, certainly again in a Windows environment, Again, uh, entirely dependent on DNS to resolve names. So if your DNS server has gone down, uh, chances are you're not going to be able to resolve the name of your, of your own email server, uh, let alone any internet based servers. Now, if it is a resource unavailable, obviously the server may be down. There could be any kind of a misconfigured link, or maybe you're using a client that is simply not supported for that particular application. Uh, you know, for, again, for example, an, an email server only has a certain number of client types that it will support. So you might be trying to use some kind of application uh, to connect to that server that simply it doesn't support. So, uh, but the server being down and or any misconfigured links, you know, those are certainly just network problems and they have to be run down. Uh, DHCP server misconfigured. You might be uh, assigning incorrect address configurations to your clients or maybe to the wrong scope or things like that. Um, so again, you just need to verify the configuration of the server. Does it have the correct address information? Maybe there was just a typo. You know, it could be something quite simple. But in that case, a single typo could affect a large number of clients. So it's something else that you just always need to verify the configuration for. Uh, and then if it's non-functional or unreachable, uh, clearly you just need to verify the operational status of the devices that are required to reach that particular system and, of course, confirm its TCP IP configuration uh, as well as your own. And if the destination host is unreachable, then uh, the routing information is missing or incorrect. Uh, that one almost always indicates a routing issue. So again, you have to validate your own TCP IP configuration for all the rel relevant devices between you and that system that you're trying to reach. Uh, so again, there's a lot of things that can go wrong from the network perspective. And uh, we'll continue on to see a few more in the next presentation.